let's do some coding. So uh, this is going to be very easy. Um, go to sketch and then go to include library, then go to manage zip libraries. So it says type topic blah blah blah. Click where it says filter your search and then type in um, DHT11 and then go to DHT sensor library by Adafruit version blah 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 blah. Then over here you'll see a button that says install. So install it and then if you have to restart Arduino, I can't remember if you do or don't. Then when you've done that, go to file and then examples and then go down to, um, where is it, DHT sensor library. Then go to DHT tester. Make that bigger. Um, as usual, I'd like to express my appreciation at this point to whoever written this library because, well, in this case, it actually looks like it's, it was Lady Ada. Now, I don't know if it was her herself. I mean, it's possible. Anyway, anyone who writes these libraries, I have appreciation for because they save us a hell of a lot of time. Um, what you have to do to write a library is you have to get to know the hardware inside out pretty much. Find out exactly what it does, exactly as what it outputs at a very low level. And you have to write some software that interacts with it. And basically, um, the library becomes sort of a middleman, if you like, between the hardware and the programmer, which is what we are now. Yeah, so they spend a lot of time doing this, so I, I appreciate their efforts. Anyway, um, the library... It says DH pin 2, so we're defining a pin, which in this case is 2, because we're connecting it to pin 2 on the Arduino. Then it says uncomment whatever it is, blah, blah, blah. In this case, I've already actually uncommented, uncommented DHT11, um, but sometimes that can be set to DHT22. So if it is, and you've got DHT11, uncomment this and comment that line um, back in. Then it says about how to wire up, but we've already done that. Incidentally, it actually says here, connect a 10K resistor, but in the um, data sheet, it says a 5K resistor. So yeah, I'd go for 5K, but it's up to you really. Look, maybe both will work. So it says initialize, blah, blah, blah. It doesn't matter about that. Now this is effectively where you start to interact with, uh, or you set up the library it's been written for us. And uh, the parameters are there and we've already set that up. Then it says serial begin. Now I usually use 115200, so I use it again here. And then it says in setup DHTXX test. Then it says wait. So it, it measures it every two seconds. Uh, it takes 250 milliseconds. So it's two seconds old. It's a slow sensor. Okay, cool. And then we use the, um, well, I'd like to call them methods, but they're not really. Read humidity, read the temperature to a float. And then it's read temperature true. Now I wonder why it says read it true. Read temperature. Is, oh right, okay. Uh, so if you say read temperature true, then it means um, give it in Fahrenheit. And I think the reason they've done that is because it's either Celsius or Fahrenheit. And the most appropriate um, uh, data type for that is Boolean because it's either zero or one. Anyway, a bit irrelevant again. Check if anything's failed. Blah blah blah. Doesn't matter about that. Compute the heat index. Now, I don't know what heat index is. Compute heat index in Fahrenheit. Compute heat index in Celsius. I don't know what heat index is. Um, but let's just see if it works anyway. So I'm going to upload. Okay, time to test this out. So it says 13 degrees. That's, that's strange, actually. I've just moved it a meter uh, closer to the computer, and it's three degrees warmer. Hmm. Anyway, I'm going to test this out by, um, well, I don't know really, what should I do? Put it under my shirt or something? No. I'll just put my finger over it. No, in fact, I'll put my my hand over it. Because the palm of my hand's warmer. In fact, my skin's very cold as well. Um, let's try it anyway. I'll put it up to my skin. Try and keep it warm. Let's see if it gets warmer. Uh, my skin's 14 degrees. Oh, 15, okay. Oh, no, I've got a better idea. I'll go up to it and breathe on it. Yeah, humidity will go up as well then. Okay, so there's humidity going up and temperature. So now, um, hmm, I'll tell you what I could do now. I could put it outside. I've got a window here. I'll just put it out of the window. And um, if it's... Well, it's actually 10 degrees in, in this room. 
But if I put it out of the window, um, it will no doubt be colder because I've had my computer on in here for about well an hour, and it's got excellent insulation in this workshop. So I was going to put I'm going to put this outside. Yeah, I'm going to have to shut the window. It's freezing out there. Right, let's see what it does. Well, it's still alive, which is a good thing. That means it's not dropped out the other side or something like that. Um, so I'll give it a minute and they'll come back. Right, so I've given it a few minutes to settle down. And um, this is what it's saying. So it's saying humidity 70%. Temperature 1 degree Celsius, 33.80 degrees Fahrenheit, and then whatever that means, I don't really know. So, um, it certainly feels like 1 degree, so I'll have a look at my phone, and we'll see what my phone says. So on my phone, it says, as you can see, minus 1 degree, and humidity, where does it say anything about, oh, there you go, humidity 92%, so... Uh, humidity, there's some sort of issue, possibly, maybe. This says 92, that says 70. And temperature here right now, it says minus 1. And that was saying 1. So, there's some discrepancy. But bearing in mind, the phone isn't going to know the exact humidity. And the other thing is, as well, is that the um, temperature sensor was right by my window, uh, with the window a little bit open for the wire to get through. And um, the humidity from this room and the extra tiny bit of temperature might have offset a little bit anyway. So, yeah, um, I'm going to say it's pretty accurate. And when I um, when I did put it outside, the temperature um, given out of it did change substantially. So, yeah, I'd say it's working. I'd say it's pretty good. Um, so there we go. Uh, that's how to wire up and code um, the DHT11 humidity and temperature sensor. So I hope you enjoyed the video and thanks for watching. Bye.